Well, if you've clicked on this video, the chances are that you were thinking of getting a bonga yourself and you're looking for reviews from people who've already got one. Well, I've had this bongo for six years now and in this video, I'm gonna go through the top five mistakes that I've made. Well, my first mistake was not finding a bongo-friendly garage soon enough. For the first few years, there have been no mechanical problems with this bongo at all. It was a fresh import from Japan and it had only done 48,000 miles when we bought it and we had it under seal straight away so we saw um, there was no rust on it. So over the years as it's been used I hadn't really needed to have anything mechanical done to it but I've gone to a local garage to do its MOT and it's always flown through so I've never really thought about a bongo friendly garage. However last autumn um, I took it to the usual garage for its MOT and it failed. It fails on emissions. So the garage, it's not their fault. They did, um, they tried to sort of do a few repairs. They were expensive repairs, unfortunately. So it cost me about 500 pounds um, in parts, which didn't work. It still failed. And essentially it was because the garage weren't familiar with the, the peculiarities that are the bongo. And in the end, I took it back to Worcester. I live in South Wales, so this was um, a bit of an inconvenience, to be honest. But at the end of the day, it's a garage who are really familiar with bongos. They were able to fix it um, at, at a really reasonable price. And while it was there then, I had the full service. And I think six years down the line, um, obviously the mileage is clocking up now. And um, from now on, the lesson I've learned is I'm going to have a full service done every year at this bongo friendly garage in Worcester. So my advice to you would be find a garage that is good with bongos. If you don't know any, ask around. You can ask on all the Facebook forums and you'll, you'll get plenty of advice on there. Mistake number two, rushing modifications. I really did not research the roof I had when I first bought this bongo. I didn't research it enough. I guess I thought the pop top I ended up with was going to be very easy to use, give me lots of space, and, and it did, it, to be honest, it, it did give a lot of space. What I hadn't reckoned on was how difficult it was going to be um, to put up and to put away again. There's a whole video on my reasons for um, wanting to change that by the way so I'm not going to go through it again, go and check that video out. Um, but essentially I spent that money far too soon. I think with hindsight it would have been good to have taken the van as a tin top. Um, I didn't do any of the kitchen conversions anyway because I already knew that I hadn't made up my mind on what type of kitchen um, if any conversion or whether the eight seats was going to work for us. So I'd already made my mind up that I wasn't going to do any of that. But I think I did rush the roof. I didn't see any examples of the particular roof that I had before it got fitted. And my point is really do your research. If you can, go and see examples of the type of work. If you go to any of the, the bongo meets, um, have a check out on Facebook. There are lots of local groups of the lovely bongo community. Most people are more than happy to let you have a little look around and give advice. As it is, it took me five years, but I have now got the roof I like. I've got a high top, um, but it was an expensive mistake. And I think if I had done a little bit more research, that would have saved me some money. Mistake number three, letting fear hold me back. I don't know if you can relate to this, but in the early days of bongo ownership, I was terrified that the van was going to break down all the time, that it was going to overheat. Um, 
that I wasn't going to be able to manage on my own. So the result was I have not, for the first few years, used the van to its full extent. Um, the result, the van would sit on the drive and the, there's probably about two years in particular where this poor van sat on my drive week after week, month after month. And then you notice things like uh, green algae building up on the mirrors. And it just looks so sad. And it made me feel guilty just looking at, looking at it. So I think use your van. It doesn't have to be a big full-on production. You don't have to go away for a big camp. But just use the van. Um, I think I was afraid that because of the fuel efficiency, you know, they're not the best. You'd be very lucky to get late 20, 28, maybe 30, that's a real push, miles per gallon. So I kind of thought, oh, I'll take the other car, it's it's less um, less costly. But when I, inevitably, when me or Richard jump in the van and drive it, we always say the same thing, it's so lovely to drive. If you've had a bad week or you're feeling a bit stressed, just drive in the van a mile down the road, just gives you a bit of a lift. It's such a lovely vehicle to drive. Um, it's automatic so you know it's just and suddenly you think ah oh, I wish I hadn't left it so long. So use the van um, as I said just take it for a drive. Have a cup of tea in it. Funnily enough during this lockdown for the last 10 weeks I probably have been in my van more over the last couple of weeks than I have in the entire over five years that I've had the van. Now, I haven't gone very far in it, I haven't driven it far, but just being in it. There is one fear that remains for me and I really want to overcome this and I'm hoping you'll be coming on this journey with me in time. Um, I have a fear of driving in Europe. I have got a real block about driving in Europe and I would dearly love 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 to drive to Portugal I really would I know at the moment things the way they are that's not going to happen anytime soon but it's a fear I need to overcome and I have driven in France before not in this vehicle so it's a mental block and I'm going to work on it but yeah don't let the fear of you, ma you won't be able to manage this on your own or that you're afraid of breakdowns. As I said, uh, refer to point one about getting the bongo friendly garage. Break down cover if you have to. But these vans don't like sitting too long without um, moving around. And um, yeah, they just like being used. So that would be a big advice for me. Use your vans. So along with the fear um, and not using my van as often as I think I should have done, um, it resulted in the van not being used as much and it led to the van became a bit of a problem. Um, it took up space on the driveway. We had a couple of cars in this family so it was always a bit of a pain so we ended up putting it and paying for storage for it. Now I know a lot of people do that and it's a really good solution for a lot of people. Um, from my point of view, the first storage we had, um, we actually put it in a container. Uh, I thought this was a good idea because um, it would stop it getting rusty. Um, but the performance to get it in and out of that container and the cost actually was ridiculous I don't know what I was thinking of it was during a house move and we had other things to keep in it so it, it was only for a couple of months but um, when that expired we took the same storage unit we had an outdoor space for the van and at the time I thought it was a great solution it cost a couple of hundred pound for the year but it was secure so it was good from the insurer's point of view so for some people that that will work really well um, Again, from my point of view, it was just another reason not to use the van, that it was a couple of miles drive and you had to swap the cars around and it was just like if I was going to go for a drive in the afternoon, 
I wasn't really going to go to the hassle of driving a couple of miles to get the van and, and drive that around. So again, another reason not to use the van. Um, we have a, a lot less cars in our family now for one reason or another. So the driveway has space for the bongo. And again, it just means that I use it a lot more and saves a lot of money as well. Mistake four, overstuffing the van. I'm working so hard to work on this aspect, both in the house and in the van. In the early days, we didn't have any conversion in here. It was an eight seater, so there was no storage to speak of. So uh, to start off with, we had those plastic storage boxes and um, gradually over time, we started adding more and more stuff to the van. Um, pots and pans, plates, Basically anything that had a camper van logo on it. I was a sucker. If anything looked camper vanny, I'd want to buy it. Bunting and, well, just, just following the crowd, really. If I saw somebody using a gadget, I'd want one. And I still do. I'm still tempted with those Ridge Monkeys, but I haven't bought one yet. Um, so over time, we've gradually jettisoned a lot of the stuff. It's a work in progress. And I am looking in the next few weeks because it looks as though in Wales we might be allowed to travel a little bit further next week. So I need to get this van ready for action again. It's been full of my craft materials. All the cupboards are full of stuff that's not camping related at all so it needs to be sorted. So I'm looking forward to minim minimi minimalizing. That's really difficult to say. I'm looking forward to minimalizing the van taking what i use and if i don't use it getting rid of it um i've got more storage now than i've ever had before but i've got to be really careful that i don't just fill it full of stuff so i know in the past we've done that it's created uh, a lot of tension when we go away camping so my advice would be um, yeah, really think about anything, even little things. You think, well, that won't take up much room. Stick it in the cupboard and before you know it, um, every, you don't know where anything is and it's all becoming unmanageable. Um, if you need inspiration for in the house, for example, I love watching Mrs. Hinch. I don't know if anybody, um, she's on Instagram and on her stories, she does lots and lots of tips of cleaner materials and uh, things, yeah, things to buy, so it's potentially more stuff, but they're generally towards helping organise, and I find her brilliant. So, yeah, look online for ideas. Again, I can't stress enough, the Bongo community are great, and there's lots of really good ideas out there. Going along with the overstuffing, um, I think generally um, I'm working towards simplifying everything um, in life and in the van. And that goes for the outside stuff as well. We have tried so many different um, awnings over the years. I personally don't get on with an awning that attaches to the van. Again, it's a bit like the roof. It's a bath driving off and coming back. It's it's. I know most people manage it very easily, but for me... It's it's something I really don't want to bother to do when I go away camping. But sometimes you do need the space um, to store things. So we have found um, from Kuchwa, I'll put a link in the description. It's an inflatable shelter. Uh, it's modular, so you can add little bits to it. And we've had that now, oh, five years. And um, it's it's a bit of an investment. But I can put that up myself when I get onto a site. Um, it's a shade as well. It just expands the space of the van. Um, I have been tempted with wind-out awnings. I've come to the conclusion they look stunning. They are amazing. But it's just, like I said, I'm trying to simplify. Do I really, really need it? Not really. Um, so I haven't, haven't gone for that at the moment. Mistake number five. I haven't documented enough. When I bought the van, I thought I was going to keep almost like a captain's log. I bought a gorgeous journal, put it in the glove box, 
And my plan was to record every time we went on any journey in the van, to record where we'd gone, um, tips, things to remember for next time. And I just haven't. And I really regret that because we've been sort of going places in the van now for, for more than five years. And I can't remember. I can't remember them. You think you're going to. The other thing I haven't done is organise the photos. So now when I'm doing this for example, um, I'm trying to sort of find videos or photos from the past to illustrate a point I'm making and I haven't organised them very well and that just creates, um, doesn't make it very easy. So going forward, um, I do plan on sort of documenting trips and that's a very big reason for this YouTube channel is to sort of document the journey and anyone who is interested can, can sort of watch as well. Um, but yes, um, it's amazing how quickly you forget the places you've been and um, I think going forward it's just lovely to look back on. Part of the pleasure of, of having the van is looking back places you've been and just, yeah, it's much easier to do that if you've either got it written down in a logbook or you've got this sort of documentary style vlogs if you like. So yeah, that would be my fifth mistake.